Hello! My name is Inigo Montoya. You kill my father. Prepare to die. He's a six finger man. <laughs> Hello and welcome to yet another review from the Game Over Jack channel. This is the one fourth skill Ash Ketchum and Friends from Pokemon by Legendary Collectibles. Now I love Pokemon and Pokemon Red was my first ever Pokemon game. So this statue was an absolute nostalgia trip for me for the Indigo series. Before we get started with the review, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. If you're looking for the unboxing and assembly of this statue, I've posted the links in the description. So for this statue review, I'm going to start with the base. The base is uh, very simplistic, with the outer ring just being a Pokeball. Simplistic, but awesome. And then we have the awesome Pokemon logo at the front. Now for the features of the base. We have water. We have reeds. We have grass. We have a boulder. That is a nice boulder. And then we have some nice little flames. Or is this lava? God knows. Towards the back, we have a tree stump that was painted and textured really well. This also has Ash's original backpack propped up against it with another awesome paint job and behind that, God knows why, it was so hidden, but we have the Pokedex or Dexter telling Ash what everything was so he didn't have to make any effort to remember. This little part was a little bit fiddly to put in the keyhole and it really didn't want to go in without putting any added pressure, but eventually we got there. We'll start at the side with the water feature. This part is beautiful. I love the clear resin that was used for this uh, with all the bubbles, the waves, just propping up Squirtle. Really nice little feature for a water Pokemon. Uh, I did have a small issue keying it in alongside the grass, but yet again, got there in the end. They just had to be keyed in at the same time. Now onto the grass. Well, it's grass. It's painted well, but it's grass. What else can I say? Now, I am quite surprised not a single part of this was broken, as it's all individual little blades. And the way it was packaged seemed really odd. But congrats to the company who packaged it, because not a single blade broke. We also have four separate parts of the grass dotted around the base. They weren't the easiest to figure out where they all went, because we don't get instructions, as per usual with unlicensed pieces. But it went, it went well eventually. The reeds were a nice touch too, between the water and the grassy feature. The rod parts I believe were made of metal, so they are really sturdy um, and they key in quite easily. Now the boulder with Charmander on it. Surprisingly the only part that didn't look as good as the rest. Seems a little glossy for a rock. Sort of reminds me of the rocks on Kratos' Prime 1 statue. You good? That was some <laughs> sass. That was some sass. But it's fine. Charmander is on it, so it can be forgiven. And that little clear orange flame to add a little more to this look is just really awesome too. The only downside to this base is actually the main base paint application with the dirt and grass built into it. It seems a little lazily painted and a little haphazard. Um, but thankfully, because it's covered in all the other Pokemon features, it gets overruled anyway. So who should we start with? The Pokemon or Ash? Let's work our way up. Starters, Ash, then Pikachu. A poor little guy. But we'll start with Squirtle. This little guy is perfect. The only thing missing is his Squirtle Squad glasses. Someone with a 3D printer drop me a message. We can make one for everyone. The whole Squirtle Squad is this team. But the paint job on this little guy is perfect and the way he's propped up on the waves is such a nice way to display him. He just looks so happy. It's great. I love how they got his little brown eyes bringing more life to him as a character. Babasa! <laughs> the little caretaker of the team has his vines spreading out either side towards a Squirtle and Charmander, maybe going to give them a smack and keep them in line. Putting his bulb and his vines together was a bit of a pain because they don't look like they'd actually line up with the keyholes, but when the bulb actually goes on top and just holds them in place it works out pretty well. But I really like the shading they've done across the bulb with each petal. Is it a petal? Eh, never mind. I was a little worried they'd mess up the colour of his main body, but it's spot on here. And I'm going to assume this is as close to a smile as Bulbasaur can pull off. But it looks sweet as a little front and centre Pokemon to the statue. Just glad to see this one didn't get left in a Pokeball with Professor Oak. <coughs> Charmander. Another happy little guy and a big change from how Ash <coughs> Brock found him. I mean, look at his happy little face. They've done such a great job showing off the Pokemon expressions in this statue. Again, 
perfect coloring and painting not a single issue with this piece and i especially love the little clear resin flame for his tail that comes as a separate piece just so it doesn't break another great piece i honestly don't think i've seen any real complaints about this statue so far ash worst pokemon trainer ever can't even win leagues in his own show then gets relegated to being 10 year old forever starting with his trainers <laughs> get it trainers trainer fuck <laughs> These are really well done and perfectly resemble his shoes from the show. Now, this sculpt gets a bit weird. So on his legs, the jeans, there's a lot of really nice texturing to really make it look like jeans. And they're painted and sculpted great to show how the creases of the way he's standing. Then we move on to the shirt, which has no real texturing and is just kind of flat. Looks a bit strange. But you know what? That's not a complaint. This is actually perfectly sculpted. It's simple, but it's amazing. Perfect paintwork again, and really takes you back to those weekend mornings watching this in your bed, or in some cases like mine, dashing home from school as fast as possible so you don't miss it. The sculpt is awesome though, making it look as if it's flowing to one side. Then we have his fingerless gloves, his right hand wrapped around a perfectly sculpted Pokeball, and his left hand is all upside Pikachu. Nah, it's just propping him up, but just a funny place for a key to go in. Now there's only one switch out for this statue and I honestly don't see me using it. I don't think this separate head really translated well into a statue format, but the original head is perfect in every way. Really shows off Ash's happy expression and matches perfectly with Pikachu's. The other head on the other hand, which is more stern, I will catch this Caterpie sort of look with his cap pulled backwards. I mean, I love those scenes in the show, but it just looks a little odd on this statue for some reason. But the head sculpts are great, a true likeness to the character from the show and done so well considering he's been put into a more 3D format. His hair looks especially great the way it was sculpted to try to show off individual strands and again, perfectly on point with the colours of the skin tone and the hat. <laughs> this is the only part that I think looks a little odd. The paint seems a little more glossy here than on the rest of the statue and I can't quite put my finger on it but something seems a little off about his face. But regardless of that, this Pikachu brings the whole statue together along with Ash. I do really worry about the weight of Pikachu on that arm though since the arm keys in separately with a magnet that sits vertically. Will it just fall off at some point? Guess we'll have to wait and see. But again, the colours are great and it really flows with the happy feeling the rest of the statue has. Another little extra that we get is actually the authenticity card, which is just a nice little addition and just sits nicely beside the statue when it's on display. Now for the size of this beautiful piece, the height of the statue comes- Oh shit, I didn't measure it. <laughs> <laughs> now for the size of this beautiful piece, the height of the statue comes into a total of 42 centimeters, the width is 38 centimeters, and the depth is 32 centimeters. So it doesn't take up a lot of room in most displays, and it's the perfect size I would believe. But it is a little on the heavy side, so please reinforce your shelves. Now, even though this piece is sold out at the time of recording this video, as far as I know, the price of this statue came to a total of $449, which is a great price for a piece like this. But I was very surprised there was no art box that came with this statue, unlike the rest of the statues that came out from Legendary. What's up with that? But overall, I absolutely adore this statue. It is much better than any of the pictures that were shown for the promotional material or anything like that, or even pictures from other fans. It is just absolutely perfect. And you know what? This is actually now my number one favourite statue in my entire collection. It is just that incredible. Hey Legendary, do us all a favour. Make Misty, make Brock, make Team Rocket, God damn it! You can have all my money. You got to make them all! But that pretty much wraps up this review. What did you think of this statue? If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more statue reviews. But until the next one, thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.